You don't need the animations to wow the player, but you might need the animations to engage the player because you're going to look at areas that they want to get better. And we showed that with Steven Gerrard. Sometimes it's resilient, sometimes it's hard. So you want to engage them visually. Um, you want to highlight certain areas. You want to see the relationship between units that sometimes they won't get when they're just watching every touch that they're getting. Um, it's very difficult to consume the game tactically when you're away from the team. So what they, they usually watch Monday Night Football if they're in the UK. If they're over here, they might watch NBC on a Saturday morning. It's hard to get that tactical insight. So you might need to do that for them. Um, it's grey areas, and I'm going to show you an example here that sometimes information is not you did that bad or that wasn't right. Sometimes it can be good, but it can be a little better or it can be good and it can be a little different. And it also can highlight quality control to your information given as a coach. Sometimes a coach, we talk too much, we get everything off our chest and then all of a sudden the player just nods the whole time. But if we have to animate, that takes time for coaches. So now we're having to work on, all right, well, he just needs three or four clips here because I don't have six hours to animate every single one. And it shows that you are taking the time to prepare for a meeting. So if I was to meet with Tammy Abram after watching that match, this is what I would show him, or this is the process I would go through. This is using uh, keyframe software, keyframe. Um, I'm going to put it up here now in a second. It's what I would recommend. Any, it's the most affordable tool in the market. It's the easiest to use tool in the market. And in my opinion, uh, for, for going down and getting your work done and getting that to the player's head. Absolutely fantastic. So this I'm using this here from Keyframe as an example of how, if I got those clips that I wanted to use, this is how I would break it down and show uh, Tammy after the game. Four clips that I've animated um, looking for his feedback on my feedback. So in this first clip, you can see Tammy Abram combining with the left back of Chelsea, just with some counter movements. Tammy drops short, full back goes into the space in behind, and it just, what it does to the Barcelona defence in terms of the shape, just unbalances them slightly. So full backs caught a little bit behind, what you would typically want or what you could possibly want from Tam Abrams here is to spin off into that space because when the ball is shifted to the other side from the fullback, he's then looking from a position that he could possibly hit that ball into Tam Abram, into the space and create something he has to come back. They do well actually coming out of it to combine. This next one here, is just in terms of his movement, he's dropped, when they drop it short, he's dropped behind the Barcelona defender, Pique, when the Chelsea midfielder perhaps would want them in front of him uh, to bounce the ball off because he's got another option there with a Chelsea midfielder. If he does bounce that ball off, he could potentially combine right in front of the two Barcelona central defenders. So maybe his position then could be five yards in front of PK or or towards him. Uh, he doesn't get an opportunity to play forward. You can see the Chelsea midfielder then communicating with the forward players, wanting a bit more movement there. And maybe that's what it was. This one here, again, it's just the detail of the movement. He's not in a bad place here. He doesn't have a lot of options here. But if he moves, again, five yards to the side or even if he makes a run in behind the Barcelona defence, he might just move this space and make this space in front of the Barcelona back four a little bit bigger for the Chelsea midfielders who combine and break into this space. But because Tammy Abram is standing in this space, it becomes way too congested. So if he's spinning out of that or moving out of that, he can maybe create more space in front of the back four. He doesn't, he stays and they run out of space. And then 
give up an opportunity in the counter attack then not a lot of space to play in and then Barcelona moved the ball really quickly on the break and then this one here really good movement here ball goes back there's a opportunity to play into Tammy Abram um, he, he creates a bit of space off the centre back so you could be happy with that there choose not to use him which is fine but ideally when the ball starts to move again again they've off balanced the Barcelona defence and maybe that's an opportunity for Tam Abram to get in behind and to stretch them because they've got a midfielder facing forward with the ball in possession who has the ability I'm sure to threaten that area right there so he moves in eventually but maybe not with the aggression that you would perhaps want and then this one's really good, it's just timing, where Chelsea bounced the ball off, and then on the half turn here, and the Barcelona defence does really good in fairness, and Tam Abrams has a, has a chance to get in behind. It's a great ball, it's a great run, it's a great idea, but it's just marginally offside, and that's probably the detail at this level that you would you would want them to look at. He was offside, but just about. So a discussion like that, you can have at any level, four or five clips that as a coach, you can then you know, put together on, on keyframe and then work your animations around that there. You can highlight them. You can highlight other players. You can highlight space. Um, I, I think that's a big, big help to a player who sometimes players play the game. They don't see. We talk about overloads a lot as coaches, don't we? We talk about, well, they never took advantage of a 3v2 or a, even a 2v1 situation in different areas. But is the player really seeing that at the time? Sometimes you have to revisit that. But animations really help in that there. Um, another aspect of keyframe, what it allows you to do is that sometimes to, to as a coach, you can send a clip and write a text. Uh, and, you know, some players today don't read texts uh, as detailed as, as probably we would want. We write them like emails sometimes as coaches. So another uh, uh, tool that, that keyframe has is that it allows you to actually put the audio alongside it. So when you're working and doing your, your animations, it can, you can press record and you can talk. So just a quick example of this, this would be maybe you could put that on the coach logic platform and leave it to the player, or you could send it to their phone perhaps. Uh, this is just a quick example of one of the clips or that, that maybe you could do with that there. I thought this was really good, Tammy. thought the way you and the fullback worked with you dropping in, fullback going high was fantastic. Really unbalanced the Barcelona defence. Right here you can see what it did to their back four. But with this picture in mind, I think ideally we would want you to as soon as this happens, to be aware of the picture that it creates and then immediately to get into the space between the two centre backs as soon as it's unbalanced because that's where we feel that you can threaten the goal. So if you drop into that space right away, you can see here that you stay in the midfield area probably for a second or two longer than we would want and then when the ball's on the far side and now as soon as it's going we would prefer that you were on attacking that space there between those two fullbacks and looking for this pass here from the winger and we could utilize you there <laughs> 